Welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all, and in this video, we have quite the rescue operation on our hands. Now, before we go any further in the video, I do want to let y'all know that any and all of the specifics regarding any of the mods or trucks used in this video will be listed in the description box down below. So, again, if you're curious about the specifics of any of these mods, make sure you look in the description. Now, I received some info about a newer model Duramax that had been left abandoned in a nearby, kind of like in a nearby pond close to a logging area. Now, as far as I can figure, it was probably a truck that was, like, used as a company truck for the logging company, and then I would venture a guess that something broke on it, and then there was a flood where it was parked, and then it just kind of, it just kind of stayed there and began to rot away, but here's the thing. It's not rotted away to the point to where we can't save it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hook up our car hauler. We're going to run up there. We're going to pull it out of the pond that it's in. Then we're going to bring it down here to my buddy's garage. And uh, we're going to rebuild it and see what we can do with it. God, I love the way this thing sounds. This truck sounds absolutely amazing. All right, so let me get this thing out of the driveway first. And we'll back it up to where the uh, car hauler is. And we'll get everything hooked up. And then we'll get on the road and head on over to where that Duramax is. So let's back it on in. Beautiful morning out here, by the way. All right, let's get everything nice and centered. And then once we're exactly where we need to be, we can hook the car hauler up. Almost. And good. Get it attached. All right, so now let's get on the road and head on out. So this truck is currently on what I would call a mid-power tune, a mid-level mid-power tune, which means it's going to be... It's going to be usable in almost any and all scenarios. Um, the only time that you would really be able to, uh, that you would really be able to make this truck even faster and really use that power is like, let's say if you wanted to race somebody or if you were trying to haul some of the heaviest cargo in the entire game. Now, the tires that I'm running are going to be the 39-inch, uh, they're more of like an, uh, like an all-terrain, 39-inch uh, all-terrain dually setup. But I think they look really, really good, and they're very well balanced to the toe suspension in terms of height. So, I'm a big fan of these. Now, in terms of the actual interior setup, I have this thing set up as a manual. We've got the tuner up there on the dash as well. And if you look on the ground in the floorboard, you can actually see that it not only has the, uh, the gas and the brake pedals, but it's also got a clutch pedal over there on the left, which is only added to the interior of this truck if you choose the manual transmission option. So it's in insanely in-depth the way Diesel Attic 66 set this truck up. Such a beautiful area out here, by the way. It's an absolutely gorgeous map. You got what looks like a little bit of a, like a RV park down in there. All sorts of areas on this map that you wouldn't really expect to find. And of course, if you guys would like to see more... Oh, okay. If you guys would like to see more specifics on kind of the geographical features of this map, let me know in the comment section down below because I'm totally down to do more exploration videos if that is what you guys would like to see. But back to our rescue mission. Now, we should be coming up to a turn on the left that should lead us up to where that logging area is. So this should be our turn looks like it. How's our trailer doing back there? Not too bad? All right, let's go ahead and turn on in. Looks like we're gonna have to be in four-wheel drive. We're gonna put it in four-wheel drive and, well, technically, I guess it would be six-wheel drive, um, and put it in low plus and we'll ease ourselves up on this trail. It's not really a trail, is it? It's more like an entry road that just so happens to be a little bit flexy, but I love the fact that we've got, like, a proper hood stack on this thing, and I also really love the fact that even though we are on a towing suspension, it's still got some movement to it. It's still got some flex. It's still got some compliance so that whenever you are going through uneven terrain like this, it's not beating you up. It's not throwing the truck all over the place. It's not, you know, getting you a bunch of damage. It's actually, this is actually really, really nice. Now, over there, oh, that looks like it's it. Yeah, it looks like it just started to rust away. It looks like they just left it there. So this is going to be a multi-step process. I'm not going to take the trailer way down in there. What I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to pull it out of there with the truck first. Then, like, we'll get a little bit of a look at it, and then we'll get it up on the trailer and get it back to the garage. So let's drop the trailer. Well, not right here. Let's drop the trailer in a slightly, slightly smoother area so that once we have to hook back up to it, it's not, like, a big issue. All right, this will be fine. Detach trailer. All right, and now I'm going to back in so we can run a tow strap from the back bumper of this thing 
down to where that Duramax is. Now, this could be a really successful rebuild project if we do it right. We could be finding our way into a very, very, very new Duramax if we do this right. All right, so it looks to me like this thing... Let's get out and look at it for a minute. So it looks to me like this thing basically, again, just got left here and just started rusting away. Kind of odd that they would leave a truck this new right here. I wonder what is broken on it. I really do. Because for them to just leave it here, especially after, like, a rainstorm came through and this all, like, flooded out, there's got to be something mechanically wrong with it. So let me move up just a little bit. We'll start running that winch line slash tow strap. Then we'll back up and see if we can get a decent amount of, decent amount of torque on the strap. So... Let's try not to send this thing into the next dimension. All right, easing it out. Trying to work up some tension on the line. There we go. It's almost out. Why are we... Why are we on the wrong area? That's kind of weird. Okay, well... Pull, come on. All right, let me make sure that we don't go the wrong direction. All right, we're starting to, starting to track a little bit further to the left than I'm comfortable with. But it is in one piece. I mean, it's out of the drink and in one piece. So that's a big success right there. Now, I tell you what. Yeah, I know exactly how we're going to do this. All right, we're going to leave you there. Then we're going to get the trailer situated. Well, after some very careful winching, a little bit of yelling, and a lot of frustration, we finally got this truck up onto the trailer. It can be... It can be particularly challenging when the truck you are trying to load uh, doesn't run under its own power. But that's what trailer winches are for. So, luckily, it's on there. It's strapped down. It's secured. We're good to go. And now all we got to do is get it back to the garage in one piece so we can start the rebuild. Now, I did look under the hood and I noticed there were some parts missing. Um, probably, honestly, people have come and, like, scavenged stuff off the truck and things like that. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some stuff missing from underneath it as well. And either that or stuff that is just way too rusty to even work. So I didn't even try to start it after I saw that there were parts missing. I was like, ah, it's not even worth, like you know, potentially setting the truck on fire or something. So, like I said, we're going to get it back to the shop and we're going to have them go through the whole thing. And I'm sure there is going to be an absolutely enormous list of parts that we're going to need to order for it. But we turned off four-wheel drive because we're ready to get back out on the road and head on back. Let's see. Oh, dude, that looks insane in the mirror, though. Looking back and seeing the truck that we just rescued looks absolutely incredible. The fact that it's like... The fact that we were able to get, like, basically get away with a whole entire truck, albeit with a few parts under the hood missing, but uh, we're not going to worry about those. We can put those back in, or rather get new ones. Um, honestly, I'll probably have the whole entire engine gone through and refreshed, because who knows how badly the, uh, the engine could be seized, who knows how badly the fuel system could be flooded with water which you particularly don't want on one of those. And it's it's just a whole entire can of worms that I don't think anybody wants to mess with when they start that thing up for the first time. So we're just cruising down this back road at like literally about 25 miles an hour. And I will say, SnowRunner physics moment, uh, I don't feel like your truck should be sliding all over the place on dry pavement at 25 miles an hour, but that's just me. I was not on the gas for any of that. Literally not even a single bit. All right, I'm going to swing wide just a little bit. This is where we're going to turn in. Just make sure we can make this. Can we make this? It is going to be close. We cannot make that. Nope. Adjust back just a tad and head on down. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. All right, so now we've got to get it over here to the right and back in over to the garage door so that they have at least a, well... I say an easy time, a somewhat easy or maybe sort of kind of easy time uh, rolling that thing off the trailer. And it's not going to be, it's not going to be easy to get that thing in the shop. We might even have to use winches to get it into the shop. All right, here we go. Let me just try to, oh God, this trailer is not always the easiest to line up, is it? Oh my God. Once you start to get it where you want it to go, 
It's like, actually, I wanted to go just a hair the opposite direction. Oh my god, I have never done... Wow, okay, I've never backed one up to a door that well before. Alright, so now, let's go ahead and get the Chevy in the garage. So we've got it in the shop now, and it looks like whoever owned this truck previously definitely had a performance tune on it, but we had the guys at the shop go through everything in the engine, everything in the fuel system, all of that stuff is brand new, it's all been redone, rebuilt, restored, um, and we've kept the performance tune on it, because I feel like it's, I mean, it's gotta rip, right? It's absolutely gotta rip. Now, the highway transmission was an interesting choice, and I decided to just rebuild it as as is and, and and leave it alone um and then suspension wise there's really a lot of different things we could do here because this thing is on adjustable coilovers so we could leave it at the stock height we could we could turn the uh turn the coilovers way up or we could go with the off-road suspension, which isn't going to be quite as lifted, but it's going to give us a lot more flex. And I think that's probably what I'm going to do, because I would like this thing to be a combination of off-road ability and light to moderate towing. And if I do ever want to haul heavy with it, I could rework the suspension and change out a couple of things and it would be fine. Because it's already got the power to pull. Now, tires-wise, I mean, luckily... The dudes at the shop have a bunch of tires in stock right now. A bunch of tires, a bunch of wheels, in literally just about whatever kind of sizes you might want. Different sizes, different offsets. You're pretty much spoiled for choice on basically whatever set of tires you want. Now, I'm thinking I want to go with something a little bit more, a little bit more on the on the gnarly, like, off-road tire side. We could go with a dually, but we've already got the dually set up on the OBS. And so I'm back and forth on whether or not I want to dually this thing, I think what I might do is I might actually go with a set of 44s on the slightly wider offset and with a set of probably probably Baja Pro X's. I actually really like the way the Baja Pro X's look. So let me find the Baja Pro X. There it is. Baja Pro X in 44. Good to go. And then we got the stock winch right there. Stock winch is staying. It's no big deal. Um, gooseneck hitch. We'll throw it in just in case we need it. Log carrier front. That is, I don't know why that. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to be converting this to a, uh, to a logging truck, but we'll see about that maybe later on down the road. Now, let's see. Standard bed. Dually bed. We've got a flat bed that we can do as an option. Converting this thing into a flat bed would be pretty freaking sick. I'm not going to lie. Um, there's also another flat bed and a utility bed, which if we wanted this thing to be a work truck, yo, we could even turn this into a welding truck. Oh, I'd be... I'd be all about that. Okay, yeah. We're going to turn this thing into a welding truck because in the setup it's got right now, it could literally be a wilderness welding truck. You know what I mean? You could have this thing get sent out to the middle of nowhere to help not only recover, but repair vehicles that may have, you know, say, let's say they sheared something off an axle and you can weld it back on. Now, while we're here and I'm seeing that welder bed, I'm actually... Gonna swap over to a set of 44 inch dualies now that I've now that I've seen it now that I've seen it I'm like, you know, yeah 44 inch uh, Patagonia duels. Yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna go with now as far as the exhaust options go I'll probably go with the more standard exhaust. I don't think that this is gonna be a good one for stacks I mean we could do the stacks, but I'm gonna go with the standard exhaust especially with that welding bed now bumpers wise We got a bunch of options. I mean a genuinely massive amount of options and I think for clearance. I think uh, I think this one actually yeah I think this one actually is probably gonna be the best one and it's got so many lights so many freaking lights. Roll bar one. Oh, I see where that is. Now let's see. Uh, we'll throw the we'll throw the rectangular light. Well, uh, I'm back and forth about it. I actually like the parking lights up there as is. Now let's see. In terms of paint colors, I'm kind of digging this whole like rusted look because I feel like you know we've already rebuilt all of these other areas of the truck. We've rebuilt the engine and everything underneath. We've made sure it's all ready and good to go. And I almost wonder if it would kind of keep some of the charm. And of course, we're throwing beans on the dash. But I kind of wonder if it would keep some of that charm to keep that rusty, you know, that rusty style, like, on the truck itself. But of course, have a new coat of clear over it, get it polished and all that stuff. But this is currently the final product. And it's basically our welding slash recovery truck. I'm all about this thing. I love it. I absolutely love it. 
Dude, this is gonna make an amazing addition to the fleet. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys next time. Talk to y'all later.